one of the things that I was realizing when I was watching, uh, uh, ironically enough, a YouTube video, is that there's so many times that I played a game not necessarily because I thought that it was going to be a good game, but because the music is one of the things that stands out about it. Um, my favorite game in terms of the soundtrack, and it's not just mine, a lot of people love this game, is Silent Hill 2. And the soundtrack in Silent Hill 2 is so well known, at least amongst people who like creepy stuff. Like if you listen to creepy pastas on YouTube with a soundtrack in the background or, you know, music in the background, you probably have heard a rendition of one of the different songs from Silent Hill 2. And I didn't realize this personally until I like heard a very familiar beat because i think what they, they'll they do is they'll do a cover of it and they'll do it in a different pitch and sometimes they'll space certain things out make it make it faster make it slower do different things to it so it can be you know recognized i guess by the algorithm as a cover that or maybe the artist of that song not a curia milk or the cover that they have in background of creepypastas maybe they just really enjoyed uh, Yamaoka's work and, and just wanted to do their own rendition of it. I know that if I ever learned how to play a guitar, one of the first songs I'd ever want to play is Theme of Laura, like the main theme for Sidon Hill 2. So, I don't know. I don't know if it's that, but whatever. My whole point is that uh, I was thinking about that. Like, I want to get the medium. I still haven't gotten it. I pre-ordered it like <laughs> what a, fucking months ago. I still haven't picked that shit up. I hope to God that I can still get payments on it. Or pick it up later. I don't want them to get rid of my order. Um, just because Akira Yamaoka is the composer or the producer or whatever, like he's involved. That's the only reason why. He does the music for the spirit or the dark side uh, of the of the environments. And uh, David, I think David Lynch. Uh, he's another one of my favorite composers. Oh, really? Um, David Lynch, if I remember correctly. He did the music for Dexter. I like the music from Dexter. And he also did, I think, uh, the music for Dishonored. I don't know if he did it for the series or he just did it for Dishonored 1. But I did like the music from Dishonored and I did love the music from Dexter. So that's why I started to re recognize his name. Or David Litched or whatever. I'm not really sure how to say his name. Um... But yeah, that's the whole reason why I want to play that game. I, I don't know anything about it. I know it's like spooky and it's supernatural and it's done in a dual screen kind of way. <clears throat> yeah, I literally just want to play the medium because of the people who are doing the music. I don't even, I don't even know what the fuck the story's about. What is it called? My One of my friends from college telling me was just, I should get into Bloodborne because Bloodborne is basically a fucking survival horror. And I argued with them over and over again, like, well, no, no, I don't think that's a survival horror. It's more like a Dark Souls thing, isn't it? Like no, it's not like any Dark Souls game that's come out so far. I'm not sure if uh, three had come out already. I think it, I think Dark Souls three had already come out at that point. And uh, that co the combat in three is a little bit different than uh, two or one. Two, two is a fucking it's just hilarious dumpster fire. I can't wait to play it. <laughs> but anyway, um, Bloodborne was sold to me as it's basically a survival horror with a bit more combat. And I'm not sure if they mentioned, but I think they did mention that it had an excellent uh, soundtrack. And that's what got me really into wanting to play it. 
the fact that it was a survival horror game with a very good soundtrack. And they didn't lie to me. I mean, I remember whenever I moved in with uh, Seven over the summer, I know that that was like one game when we were like cleaning and shit. He would play in the... Yeah, that was like one game. One game. Well, we got obsessed with that game during that time, but one of the things he, he would play is the soundtrack from Bloodborne. And what would strike me outside of the context of like the game was that the game, obviously, since it's a soundtrack, it usually doesn't play the entirety of the song. It simply plays a certain part of it. And one of it is... Uh, one of the best ones to understand that is the the hunter's theme like whenever you're in the hunter the hunter's dream and there's like a song playing it just it's just playing a different part of it depending on certain factors regarding the game or how much in insight you have or something but it's the same song it just doesn't it just loops a certain part anyway um i'm starting to realize that i'm the type of person that plays survival horror games for music not necessarily because of the elements but for music the only other game I can think of, like, recently, I've been playing, it's like one of the things that's been getting me through work lately, actually, is uh, one of the ones that some people didn't like for you know, their own reasons. Um, it's called uh, Sense, a uh, cyberpunk uh, survival horror story, something like that. Um, I have it on the Switch because it, it fits. That seems right. Like, it seems right to play that game on Switch. I need to get Lone Survivor on there. But anyway, I love the music in that one. And the reason I clicked on this one was because it reminded me of another game I played, I think, last year. Uh, called uh, Tokyo Remembrance. Which, it feels kind of like a Flash game you could find. Like, a Flash game with a little bit more focus put on the art. But even then, like, it's a very simple game. It's basically a point-and-click side-scroller. Um... With multiple endings. To me, I'm a huge whore for multiple endings. Uh, if I care enough, I got like as many endings as I could. But I'm also... I think that when multiple endings are combined with like new items. In the sense of not just like costumes, but also you get like a... I don't know. An infinite uh, rocket launcher or something. Like, I liked playing it for that. And that anyway. So I played uh, Sense because it reminded me of... The art style somewhat reminded me of uh, Tokyo Requiem. I think that's what it was called, yeah. Um, and Tokyo Requiem had really good songs, so much so that I was looking for a uh, soundtrack of it because I'd want to like, have it in the background. It's like really chill, like little like beats type of thing that go on throughout the throughout the game because most of the time up until like the halfway point of the game you're just kind of walking around as a detective trying to find some shit out about you know uh, how your your boyfriend got killed that's the whole point of the game really then later on you find out like there's deeper things involved and all this other stuff so i don't know like that's the whole reason i clicked on it i liked tokyo requiem because of the music it had as well as you know the story and other elements but it was mainly the music that made me continue playing it I played another game since uh, a cyberpunk horror, survival horror story because it reminded me of that game. And once I clicked on sense and started playing it, I started realizing the music's actually pretty nice. So I don't know. It's a weird realization to have that all of a sudden <laughs> the only reason I kick on games and play games in my late 20s, early 30s is so that I can listen and re uh, not, not so that I can listen. But because I like listening to music while I play games, I like for the music to be like chill and relaxed when it needs to be relaxed and intense when it needs to be intense. And I just think that that's interesting.